Speaking of games, a dangerous one is playing out in the Red Sea. Houthi rebels versus the West. The Houthis made the first move. They picked off commercial ships one by one. So the West responded. They announced a 10-nation maritime coalition, sort of like the Red Sea Avengers. Just one problem, though. These Avengers have barely, are barely interested. Of course, the U.S. does not admit this. According to them, the coalition is adding new members. As far as Operation Prosperity Guardian, uh, we've had over 20 nations uh, now sign on to participate. Uh, the nations that have agreed uh, to um, publicly discuss their participation, uh, we've put those out there. Since the announcement uh, on Tuesday, uh, Australia and Greece have also uh, highlighted their participation in this, uh, this operation. I know it sounds impressive. Ten nations on Monday, 20 nations by Friday. But who are these members? We know 12 of them. The initial 10 plus Greece and Australia. That leaves eight unknown countries. Apparently, they don't want to be publicly named. Now, I know masked superheroes are all the rage. But this is the real world. Countries love adding their name to groups and coalitions. So if they're not, it means only one thing. They're not fully invested. And we don't blame them. Even the known members are not keen. Look at Australia. Guess how many soldiers they're sending to the Red Sea. Eleven. Eleven soldiers. No warships, no aircraft, just eleven soldiers. And don't laugh at Australia because the Netherlands is sending two soldiers. Norway is sending ten. So the question is, where is the new hardware that was promised? Well, France and Britain have sent warships, again with a rider. The French ships will remain under French command. They will not take orders from the U.S. As for new deployments, there is no word. Same with Italy. They're sending a warship to the Red Sea, but it's not part of the U.S. mission. It's part of existing operations, apparently. You know what all this reminds me of? A bad party thrown by a good friend. You can't skip it, nor can you stay for long. So what do you do? Token participation. It may save your friendship, but it won't save the Red Sea. More ships are being rerouted. Hong Kong's OOCL is the latest to make the announcement. Their ships will avoid the Red Sea. Instead, they will sail around Africa. And these route changes have consequences. Oil markets are spooked. Shipping rates are up and exporters are worried. Just look at the Chinese market. Shipping rates from China to the Mediterranean are up 44%. Imagine that, 44% rise in one month. Even Indian exporters are reporting similar numbers. 30 to 40% jump. So I guess the obvious question is this. Has the Red Sea force failed? We'd say fail may be a strong word, but the start is not impressive. Yesterday, we told you why Arab countries have not joined, especially Saudi Arabia. They fear reprisals from the Houthis. But tonight, let's look at Western nations. Among them, only one seems interested, the United Kingdom. They've put a warship under U.S. command. Their foreign minister is also lobbying in the Arab world. He was in Cairo on Thursday. He tried hard to get Egypt on board. It will be damaging to Egypt. It will be damaging to Britain, damaging to the whole world if uh, there are these repeated attacks on shipping. That is what Operation Prosperity Guardian is all about, and Britain is proud to take part in that, uh, with British ships trying to help keep those sea lanes open. Does it work? Honestly, did it work, rather? We don't know. Maybe Egypt is one of those eight anonymous members, or maybe it's not. There's no way to know, which brings us to why Western states are reluctant. A, there is lack of trust in the U.S. They haven't hit back at the Houthis. It's almost like Joe Biden is holding back. And B, this coalition is not the only solution to the problem. There's a much easier one. End this war. Just look at all of America's partners, France, Australia, Spain, Canada, Norway. These are all countries that call for a ceasefire in Gaza. If the war ends, so do the attacks in the Red Sea. And that's what the Houthis have said. It's only the U.S. that doesn't want a ceasefire. So can you really blame Paris or Canberra or Madrid? They want a ceasefire. They know a ceasefire will end the Red Sea problem. They also know the U.S. can do it. Yet they're being asked to send warships and soldiers. So the hesitation is not a surprise. And we're not saying that the coalition will not work. It's too early for such an assessment. But it does reveal the problem with America's approach. A military solution 
to a political problem. When was the last time that worked?